The key design consideration with implementing a solar pool heater is the pressure. We want to tie solar in where the pressure is lower than the height of the roof. Pressure and height are interchangeable. 0.433 PSI is one foot of elevation difference. Allow me to demonstrate. The pressure on the filter is the pressure between the pump and the filter. We're interested in the pressure downstream of the filter. So one way we can determine that is to drill and tap a pressure gauge in. Use a 7 16 drill bit. This is a quarter inch pipe tap. It's a tapered thread, so you've got to go in deep enough to match the taper of the pressure gauge. So we have five and a half PSI between the filter and the gas heater. Uh, we're normally going to see at least five PSI because you need five PSI across a gas heater to make it operate. Otherwise, it won't even fire. Uh, five and a half PSI is around 11 feet of head. The conversion between pressure and height is 0.433 PSI per foot. So if we were to tap in there, the water would want to sit at an elevation of around 11 or 12 feet above that point. I'll demonstrate. So here's a tube connected right where that pressure gauge was, and the water level is sitting right at this height right here, which is just below the height of the collectors. So this is what we want. We want to tie in where the pressure is lower than the height of collectors. See that if we drop that pipe a little bit, water comes out. As we go above that point, the water sits in the tube. Pressure, this is a great way to measure the pressure in a pipe. You measure the height of the water column, 0.433 PSI per foot is the conversion of PSI. This is more accurate than a pressure gauge. What happens if the pressure is higher than the height of the roof? Well, in that case, the first thing we try to do is reduce the pressure so it's lower than the height of the roof. And the way you do that is you either enlarge the inlets where water goes into the pool. Sometimes those are eyeballs. Sometimes they can just be removed. Often you can reach in there and file them out with a round file. Sometimes we'll tie solar in downstream of the gas heater where the pressure is 5 PS lower, PSI lower. Uh, and sometimes we'll actually change the pump. We'll look at your whole pool mechanical system and say it's a two horsepower pump on a small pool. It doesn't need to be that high. Let's change it to three quarter horse, reduce your electricity bill by a factor of three, as long as it still will filter the pool. We'll redesign your pool from scratch to make sure. Uh, but there are many cases where the pressure is too high and we have to deal with that. If the pressure is higher than the height of the roof, what we're going to do is we're going to use the pressure to drive the flow through solar. So we just tee in after the filter, before the gas heater, we tee in. This pipe is under more pressure than the height of the roof. We open this valve, the water will go shooting up to the roof. What we have to have is a place to return the water that's not under pressure. We can't just divert it up there and send it back here because this has pressure. And in order to get the water from a low pressure place, the solar panels, to a high pressure place, the pool plumbing, we'd have to pump it. So we need a place where the pressure is low to return the water to the pool. If this is a new pool, we want your builder to put a separate pipe to the pool. If it's a pool spa combo, you're going to have a powerful pump and you're going to have pressure normally because you're running a spa to pool waterfall. Some, in a one pump does all system, you're running the spa jets. Um, 
you're going to have a powerful pump, you're going to have pressure. We want to put the solar heated water back to the spa. So have a separate pipe put to the spa. If it isn't a pool-spa combo, have a separate pipe put to the pool. If you're going to put collectors at ground level, you're likely going to have more pressure than height of roof because you've got zero height of roof. Separate pipe to the pool so we can return that water from solar to the pool without pressurizing it. We don't want to pressurize the collectors. Collectors get very hot in summer, especially in the sun. When the pool's up to temperature, if there's too much pressure, you've got high pressure and high temperatures, you should be using metals, not plastics. The PVC pipe the system is plumbed in cannot take that kind of heat in combination with any pressure at all. That's the key design consideration here. Plastics, pressure, temperature, the three don't go together. In the case of a pool spa combo, we want your builder to put a separate pipe to the spa because we want to put the solar heated water to the spa and then have it flow from there back to the pool. That way you get this added benefit of being able to heat the spa and the pool to two different temperatures and you be, you're able to go into spa mode without emptying the spa. If you put the water back to the pool, you go into spa mode, you can empty the spa. So we put our separate pipe back to the spa. Now if the pool's already built, as in this case, uh, first we look for another place we can put the water to the spa that's not under any pressure. And in the case of a two-pump system, you have a separate pump for the spa jets. And that's a separate circuit that is not under any pressure. We just tee the, the, the return from solar back into that same circuit and put the water from solar into the spa that way. If you turn your spa jet pump on, that pipe does pressurize a little, but not that much. Normally we can get away with that. And worst case is you can't run the spa jets at the same time as you're running solar, which isn't a big deal anyway. Uh, third best solution, first best being a separate pipe to the spa, second best teeing into the spa jet cir pump circuit. Third best solution is we just tee back into the pipe to the spa. Uh, there's not much pressure in that pipe to the spa when you're in pool mode, so we return the water to the spa that way. If you go into spa mode, you have to shut solar off in that case, otherwise you pressurize solar up to the full spa mode pressure, which is higher than the pool mode pressure. A neat feature of the pool spa combo with our solar designs is you can adjust the flow. Right here is your flow control. More flow, collectors are more efficient. Water coming from solar is colder. Colder collectors are more efficient. The spa is only three or four or five degrees warmer than the pool in this case. Slow the flow down and what happens is the water comes back warmer. The spa is now warmer than the pool by a larger margin. You can increase the temperature difference between the spa and the pool by purposely operating the collectors less efficiently, slowing the flow down with this manual valve here. It's something you could play with. It adds a whole new dimension of pool spa use when you're maintaining the spa at a different temperature than the, than the pool. You can't do that with a gas heater in a conventional pool spa combo. It's the downside of the pool spa combo that doesn't have its own separate mechanical system. In the case of in-floor cleaning, pop-up jets on the bottom of the pool that pop up and move the dirt around, you have high pressure and a high-powered pump to drive that pressure, to drive those nozzles. <clears throat> you can't put solar on a pool like that conventionally. You're always going to have too much pressure. You always need a place to return the water to the pool that's not under pressure. Very important. Now, as of January 2008, everything's changed because it's now law in California. You can't put more than a three-quarter horse pump on a pool. So for pool spa combos and many situations, builders are now going with variable speed pumps, which means the pump gets set after the pool is built. It gets set low for high efficiency, low operating cost, longer run times. And we don't have these same mechanical issues that we used to. But we do have a situation where if that pump is being used for more than filtering, which it often is, uh, you could be running it at a high pressure. For example, to run spa jets or to run an in-floor cleaning system or a special cleaning system. Uh, so you do have pressure in that pipe at times and you have to isolate solar from that pressure. Now we have seals on the valve going to solar and we also have a, a return line check valve. But if these fail, for some reason, worst case in the future, you could overpressure the collectors. So what we do in these cases is we put in a spring-loaded check valve set somewhere between 0 and 15 psi and it will just act as a fuse. It will exhaust water if the pressure goes too high and it will tell you that 
you have a problem with one of your seals. It also protects you from a mistake turning solar on when you're running an in-floor cleaning system, for example.